Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Star Wars Now. Yes, Star Wars Squadrons is now public release worldwide, I meaning you can jump into the cockpit of an X-Wing TIE Fighter and blast your friends or enemies to bits. The game is available on PS4, Xbox One, PC via the Epic, Origin and Steam Game Store, so you can basically pick it up wherever you want. We've got a lot of videos coming over the next couple of days telling you how to get the most and best experience out of Star Wars Squadrons, but today I wanted to share with you the cosmetics and how you can customise your fighters and things in game. So let's jump in and check out what's on offer for pilots like you who want to fly a more customised starship should we say. Now not only can you customise your ship like the X-Wing or TIE Fighter with custom paint jobs etc, you can of course do the components. Have these are the options here which are going to cost you a little bit more, you need glory points essentially and you gain in via multiplayer. You can also unlock various things from available in Operation 2, so certain operations through career progression and um, you know weekly like operations etc will unlock those or monthly operations I say. So that's how you acquire some of them. However you've got things like Green Squadron, stuff like that with glory. We've also got decals, these can be unlocked with glory as well, I think most of these, yeah, okay some of them under Operation 2, so you've got New Republic Blue, Dark Green, Green again, a variety of them there. Most of it's under Glory though, so as soon as you just get some of that by playing multiplayer, you're good to go in unlocking them. Now we've also got custom holograms as well, now these actually build in really well. So we've got a Dedric piece, uh, the Mantine Syrup is undoubtedly the least, or the least powerful piece in the game of Dedric. It's a limited utility makes it an extremely situational piece. So there you go, we've also got uh, a pilot portrait, an inspirational piece of art by Sabine Wren, obviously that is a reference to Star Wars Rebels, honouring the iconic New Republic pilot who saved several lives during the Sekrigo insurrection. I can't remember that battle off the top of my head, but some of you might be able to let me know. And of course we have Chopper, this is definitely one I'm going to put in the cockpit of my X-Wing. General Sedula's Astromech C110P is a belligerent grump aboard the Najai Dockyards, but he's fought more Imperial plots than most. Interesting there, so he is a part of the Najai Dockyards, I don't think the campaign mentions that, which is pretty cool. We've also got the Exogorf, that's of course the giant thing that tried to eat Millennium Falcon in Episode 5. We've also got a Galaxy Map, which is very nice to have. And finally, the Quacky Monkey Lizard. Hondo Onaka, the Pirate Lord, used to have one of these. Uh, and I'm pretty sure uh, Jabba the Hutt had one of these at some point. Yeah, this is one that was laughing in there. So you've got quite a variety of stuff. And then we've also got uh, sort of like these dashboard things we have. So you've got a Luke Skywalker figurine. We've got a Pod Racer toy. Uh, what have we got? A Tauntaun plushie. Training remote replica, a miniature sand cooler, that's funny, a miniature X-Wing as well, we've also got a mysterious adorable bird, that's, oh it's a pork, that's why, of course, Hosnian kid figurine, okay, uh, a Tugger Equ uh, Ewok plush, I was going to say Eckhart then, uh, a, G a Gonk power droid figurine, obviously that is a thing we all strive to have. Now finally we've also got a hanging flare, Millennium Falcon, fresh flowers in case you need flowers, a medical droid figurine which I love, also got a crate crystal, I quite like that as well, it gives a Sith vibe in a way. Got Nabu Star Factor with the N1 there, De uh, Destroyed Death Star Ornaments, Hoth Snow Speeder Toy, and Land Speeder Toy. So that's about everything you're going to get on the New Republic side of things there. However, if we hop over to the Imperial side, I'll show you what cosmetics we get over there, as they are also pretty cool. In the Imperial hang here, we've got a variety of things. Well, we've also got different like, arts here, and I, I showed most of these on the New Republic. However, I tend to find the ones over here look really nice on the Imperial side. So we've got Sinos Standard, which is, um, you know, this one here. That's, like, pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got Sinos Standard Blue. Ashen Enforcer Rare. Tide Patrols of Smuggers Run. Intercept Freighters. Uh, dis or suspected of carrying illicit cargo. Those who do not submit the boarding inspections are immediately obliterated. Very nice. I do love the blue bit there. It's quite nice. I wonder if that comes in red. I think it does. So the Ashen Purifier there, by the Emperor's command, the galaxy will be scoured of insurrection. Uh, Ashen Shepherd as well, Imperial Convoys, move Prisons, Valuables, so these are like different things that are attached to it. The Monarch is our most trusted pilot, so I expect to escort high profile allies. Now we've got uh, Ashen Cardinal, streaks of red strike fear into victims of the 181st Fighter Wing of other Imperial squadrons inspired by the 181st, adopted by a similar menace. Uh, I almost feel like it's a reference to maybe Alphabet Squadron or something like that, I feel like I've heard the name Cardinal some before. I think it's a character in Aftermath or something, I can't remember. Also got Suppressor as well, uh, it refers to the Insurrection on Krigo again. I need to read up on that one, I've not checked it myself. Academy Ace Series, I have a feeling this has probably made a reference to Sky Strike Academy in a way. The Emperor's Guard, I quite like this one. Almost gives me uh, Fallen Order, not Fallen Order, um, the Final Order vibes in a way of like the Red TIE Fighters like that. I don't know, I kind of like that. Ghastly Remnant, this is kind of fear as well, I'm not not a big fan of that. Now we've got the Gargoyle as well, Dark Side Legends tell of a shape-shifting Gargoyle who's menacing from lines of Coruscant skyscrapers. Hmm. Uh, and we've also got the Dragon Snake, this was very nice, though, almost like carbon fibre in a way. Forging Durasteel and now has the Dragon Snake scales into a simple process, not an entirely legal one. Now this one we've got Volcanic as well, an Imperial ship quite literally forged in the fires of Mustafar. 
following a volcanic eruption near the Korvax Fortress. This is almost like a little reference to the VR game Vader Immortal that takes around um, or takes place around Mustafar and also touches on Lady and um, Lady and Lord Korvax and how that all came to be and how Mustafar was originally like a different planet. They also got Radiance, Imperial Star Wars burn a tremendous amount of heat inside and out and uh, that one's kind of cool, very like technic in a way. Now we've also got decals for the Impale side as well. You've got Lord Vader in a couple of variations you can stick on there. Also got Impale Stormtroopers, Sky Strike Academy, again, hearing a reference to that. The Sith Eternal, I, I quite like having that logo. And I think that might be one I might use. I've not decided on logos yet. We've got the Hot Cartel. We've also got Rancor Squadron almost in a way. Galactic Empire. I do like the Empire decal. Crimson Dawn, we have that as well. I'm not sure why they're here. Um, but the Empire did turn a blind eye to what they was up to, which is interesting considering Darth Maul was involved. Hologram wise, I have actually got one favourite hologram for Star Wars Squadrons when it comes to the Imperial side, and that is of course the ISD Chimera. Grand Admiral Thrawn may be missing, but his legacy remains. Now Thrawn has actually referenced another one point in the campaign as well, I won't spoil it for you, but keep an eye out for it, and remember it's important to have those conversations with your squadron mates. We've also got Special Forces Pilot, Commander Gideon Haas stands triumphantly as a testament to the power of loyalty to the Empire. Gideon Haas, of course, was a part of Inferno Squadron. That was the main squadron in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Actually written, it was the campaign for Battlefront 2 was actually written by some of the writers for squadrons as well. So referencing Haas there, pretty important. Haas went on to join the First Order until he was eventually killed by Iden Versio. We've got Kel Tally as well. Not a fan of this one, it kind of takes a bit of space, but every Imperial pirate remembers the kills earned during their first battle. We've got a TIE Fighter Blueprint. I quite like this one, to be honest. Uh, we've also got the Lord Vader. The Emperor's Enforcer was a truly gifted pilot. Strike fear into your own heart. I was always on edge fire of the Empire's most fearsome agent. And finally, we have a Death Star 2. Never forget who we lost at Endor. Which is kind of like a fitting thing, I think. It kind of fits there. Um, but I would definitely be having the Chimera myself. That's the thing I'm going to put there. Uh, in terms of, like, dashboard, we've got Carbonite. Very nice. Uh, there's only one way to deal with creatures attempting to eat through Imperial Armor. It's a Carmelite Freezer. Uh, we've got a Droid Head. That's kind of creepy. I'm not, I don't like that. It's very creepy. <laughs> we've got a Hound Skull. Uh, okay. Uh, Credit Hounds are totally difficult to tame for some. We've got a Mouse Droid Replica. I can hear one of them running around the background of the game. Of course, we've got the Gonk Power Droid. We have that. We've got a Lord Vader statuette with a red eyes. We also got a Medal of Emperor's Fist, a rare honor award to pilots enforcing and achieving peace in the most chaotic corners of the galaxy, and a TIE Pilot. It's vital for all Imperial pilots to keep their squadrons at the front of their mind. All TIE pilots rely on and inspire each other. Now, on the final thing is a hanging flare. We've got a crystal charm. We've got an Imperial ID badge. That's basically what our unit officers are going to wear. We've also got miniature interrogation droid. The Empire always gets answers. A Kraya Dragon Tooth. Acquiring on a remote planet in the outer rim, this planet does not align with Imperial protocol. Pilots flaunting their bloodlust may only do so from a form of privacy of a cockpit. Pretty interesting. Uh, we've got a miniature Rancor as well, of course. Uh, a miniature Skype Walker, I like that one. Stormtrooper Helmet. Miniature Star Destroyer, I quite like that one. It's kind of like, it's just up there in the corner. And we've got a miniature Officer Shuttle. This is of course the Lambda Shuttle, and uh, it's kind of very nice there. Now that is of course all your cosmetics and customization items for Star Wars Squadrons. That is what you can unlock. Now you can customize your pilot as well, which I'm going to show you now. So on the right side of your hangar, you can customize your pilot here. Now this is currently my new Republic pilot right now. You can change a lot of things around here. Uh, I'm just not going to uh, confirm like a different head or like that already. But we do have like different helmets you can wear. Obviously these are quite crucial. You know, each sort of like Rebel pilot had their own customized helmet. So this is a Vintage Alliance, the a Vintage Alliance one. In the aftermath of Jeddah, new pilots need new helmets to see them through the countless battles to come. We've also got Striker. Now we've also got heavy duty helmet. I believe some pilots in Return of a Jedi at least wear these. I'm pretty sure B-Wings and A-Wing pilots wear them. We've also got Hunter's Helm. Pilots in pursuit of Imperial Stars of Lion Unrestructed Field of View. Uh, this is one for the, um, what is it, uh, B-Wing. I believe they wore these. Or at least A-Wings wore them as well. Uh, extra insulation protect wiring pilots from rattling in a high speed Starfighter. And from deafening blasts that come from bombing capital ships. You've got gunship specialists there. For the U-Wings, Industrious Helmet, Lightweight Material. I quite like that one, more modern in a way. We've also got the Thermal Helmet, very nice. What else we got down here? Now you scroll down, you get a lot more customizable ones. We've got Sentinel of Galaxy Rise of a New Republic Scouts who risk their lives to keep squadron safe. Clutch Victory, Circuit Runner, I really like that one. Uh, Natural Instinct, that's obviously the Training Helmet. Uh, True Friend, uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, Mistral's Will, Renegade, Transporter. Symbol of Hope, I like that one, it's a very nice gold logo there. Laser Brain, that's kind of funny. New Republic Recruit Helmet. Interceptors Eclegance. Castle on Dawn. Canteen Gossip says there is a planet at the outskirts of the galaxy where the New Republic sent a Star Destroyer straight into the ocean. I believe that is a reference to Rogue Squadron, it might be. Hmm, it might be. Natural Bond, uh, what was that Castle on? 
that could be referenced to Resistance in a way. I'm not sure. I almost there was a mission in Rogue Squadron, uh, Rogue or like two Rogue Leader, where you could like shoot down an Imperial Star Destroyer, but I can't remember. It might be referenced to the actual. I honestly can't remember. Now. I'd have to double check. Uh, natural Bond, Pike's helmet. We also got Scandal's helmet there. I quite like this one here, the uh, these and bronze. We also got uh, Gatal uh, Galatan gold. Sorry, forging Aldonian four parts to shine at the galaxy's suns. Daredevil blush, quite nice. And finally, we've got elegant helmet. Stylish gunslingers do the best work. Now, suit-wise, uh, we've just got default things on bodies wise I guess the suit isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We've got different flight suits, rebel lights, flight suit blue, there's a blue leader there, a bit like, you know, the Battle of Scarf. Uh, we've got green, red, white. Finally, we've got heavy-duty flight suit, uh, industrial flight suit, tactical flight suit, I quite like that one, new public recruit flight suit, and finally, the thermal flight suit. I kind of like the blue leader one. It's very reminiscent of Rogue Squadron. Oh, not Rogue Squadron, Rogue One. Also got tops, so you can wear some jackets, etc. I quite like the Scandal's jacket, and we've also got the Elegant jacket. It's quite a variety you can wear there, but they all kind of fit. You've got bottoms as well, Marauder pants, Scandal pants, and finally Elegant pants. I quite like the Scandal ones. But also I like the, uh, these because you get the um, pistol on the side. Gloves, so you can also customize this. So you've got a lot of customizations for your pilot at the end of the day. A lot of gloves to go through. All of these here have a little bit of lore about them. What's kind of cool is if you read into it, you do get a variety of lore with it. I'm not sure what this emote is, but okay. You also got slow clap, applause, heroic flex. These are things you can probably use in your social thing. That is cringe. I am never doing that again. Uh, what else have we got? Encouraging. Yeah, that's quite nice. And finally, I think these are victory poses, aren't they? I'm going to do relax. It's like, yes, look, look at me. Look how posh I am. We've got tons of stuff around here. I'm going to check out the Imperial side as well, but we also got a couple of voice lines you can swap, but these are the default things. Now on the Imperial side of things, everything's pretty straightforward and simple. We've got technical helmets, death laser helmet, obsidian reaper, very nice. Uh, we've also got hazard helmet. Again, all of these can be unlocked with glory, so make sure to keep getting those. We've also got uh, a coastal defender helmet, very much like the Scarf Shore Trooper way. Reinforced helmet. Then I love this one. This is the uh, regicide helmet. It's very nice. Uh, we've also got inversion helmet. These are all very cool. So you can pick one which you want. Obviously, you unlock these with glory. Fortune of Fondor, a reference to the uh, shipyard station of a Fondor. Uh, Cardinal Swans, I love the mask on these. These are very nice. Fangs out. Oh, that's, uh, I think that's Varko's helmet, I think. I might be. Elite Security. Honorable Enforcer. Allegiance Helmet. Rumored to be awarded to decorated pirates who prove absolute loyalty to Ember Palpatine following the Clone Wars. Very nice. Almost reminiscent of Republic in a way. Uh, also got Dark Times. Version Empire's Reign of the Galaxy. High Command. Very nice. Academy Ace Helmet. Again, a probably reference to Sky Strike Academy and Cardia. Cardia being another place for Imperial Cadets. Special Operations. Zealots. Oh, we've got some legendary ones down here. Chromium. ISB Loyalty. Ah, that's amazing. Silver Slayer. That is very bright. Bronze Baron. And we've got Golden Fury. And Hunter's Guild. Quite a lot there. In terms of suit or body again, in terms of suits, you also got a variety of these you can wear, etc. These aren't like too big, but your Academy Ace Flight. I quite like the Academy Ace Flight. Not too keen on these ones. They're not only really my cup of tea. But uh mm, I don't know. I quite like the default one. Imperial Pirates can have jackets as well, on this case, like uh, enhanced armor. I quite like the ISB Lord too. It's very much Agent Callus in a way. Uh, in terms of bottoms, these are all like pretty straightforward and simple. There you go. It's it's like straightforward. Gloves, you can have a variety of gloves if you want. They just come in like different formats. Obviously, you can wear loyalty. But I really like the ISB stuff. That fits in well. Emotes, tons of emotes down here. Obviously, if you've got a few different ones for the Empire, you want powerful, you want to like erode your Empire's power in a way. Uh, cosmetic stands. How have we got these? Got Pride, Protector. These are quite nice. Imperial Threat, that looks kind of weird. Defiance, Mission Accomplished. I quite like that one to be honest, where he takes off the helmet. It allows you to see your character as well. Reflection. One thing you don't see very much is your actual character. Because when you're in a cockpit, Another you don't see him. Patience and, precision. and that is, of course, everything for Star Wars Squadron's cosmetics. You can unlock most of these by glory, but you can also do your operations as well. Now, of course, you can unlock extra things by operations here. Our operation challenge, uh, which is going to end in 60 days, believe it or not, is to get the symbol of hope. To do that, we have to complete 20 daily challenges before the operations end to collect reward. So you've got 60 days to do this in, plenty of time. Our daily challenges right now, complete dogfight matches, I've got to complete three of them. Then I've also got battle teach them, win matches in fleet battles versus AI, I've got to complete one of them. Then pew pew, as an X-Wing or TIE fighter, I destroy enemy ships, I've got to destroy 10 enemy ships in less than 23 hours, or just over 23 hours, and I get almost 300 glory if I complete all of that. That's enough to get at least one cosmetic item. Maybe get the 4 on ISD or I might need 400 for that. Either way, you can pick up some stuff from there and that is how you're going to get stuff to shop in cosmetic items, etc. 
I have a feeling at a later date, more cosmetic items will be introduced into the game. And I really love the attention to detail that the game designers are playing on there, you know, referencing Fawn, uh, Korvax, etc., Mustafar, things like that. Because when we play these games, we've read these books, we've experienced these stories, having them in squadrons, the decals and stuff here, it's almost realistic in a way. You can imagine pilots having like a hologram of the ISD Chimera and stuff like that, or Darth Vader, and really looking up to that. It fits in well and makes a lot of sense. Okay everyone, I've been Jack here on Star Wars Now. Hopefully you're enjoying Star Wars Squadrons as much as we are. We are absolutely loving them in it and have a ton of videos coming this week on what to expect from the game as it's going to be quite fun. This month is of course very busy for Star Wars news. We've obviously got Squadrons right now at the start of it and of course we'll be ending off with The Mandalorian on October 30th. If you've got any questions about Star Wars Squadrons or you're confused about something would like us to make a video on it, let us know down below in the comment section. For now, I've been Jack here on Star Wars Now. Thanks for watching and may the Force be with you.